everyone. I'm going to give a little bit of time for people to join whilst I just set up. I'm just going to put some incense and stuff on. How is everyone doing? Is everyone okay? How is um, the build up to the full moon treating you? It feels a lot more settled than the last full moon, for me anyway. Um, so do let me know how you're doing. It just feels like things are a little bit more integrated. It feels like we've, we've been through a lot and um, it is it's starting to settle a bit more. I feel like we're feeling a lot more settled in ourselves as well. Um, especially with Pluto and Saturn, you know, going direct now. It just feels like we're ready to um to kind of take action. We're being shown like where we can make changes in ourselves. You know, when Saturn and Pluto have been retrograde, it's been very much like we've we've had to go within for all the answers. And it's like now, finally, actually, we can start taking action. It's not every full moon we're pushed through this intense healing. It's like, okay, look, like, we can actually start to um, to move a little bit. Not feeling quite as stuck in um, a confined space. Okay, we're just going to pull cards, see what messages come out. Um not really got any questions I just you know I've just done um, a reading for YouTube so there's a lot of clarity in that about the current energy so do check that out when you get time and um, but right now yeah we're just going to shuffle cards and see what what spirit um what spirit says some of you are feeling a little bit blocked um your third eye might be a little bit blocked I am sensing that you're feeling feeling stuck. You're feeling like the the connection's gone, maybe with your person or just in yourself. Like you might be feeling like you're you're not seeing things clearly right now. Um, you know there's more going on behind the scenes, and you're perhaps a little bit frustrated that you don't know what is going on behind the scenes. Um, I'm being shown here that. It, it's necessary you know you're not meant to know what's going on behind the scenes right now that's why it's going on behind the scenes it's like imagine if you went to watch a production and you could see everything the cast was doing behind the curtains like you know when the curtains close so that the scenes can change imagine if that happened for you to watch you know it'd be a rubbish show um you wouldn't be able to enjoy it because you'd see all the sets being changed and it wouldn't be that surprise so it is like you know, the reason why you can't see what's going on is because we're having a set change. Because, um, yeah, they're, they're changing what is going on behind the scenes. They're, they're preparing you for the next chapter. And it feels like we're at the interval. This isn't just the curtains closed, it opens and we've got new characters on stage. We're at the interval. It's like the curtains have closed, we were waiting for them to open. Because maybe things have shifted more quickly before for you in the past. Um... And actually now we're being told, oh, you've got to wait 15 minutes now before the curtains open again. And it's that space of, uh, well, the queue for the toilet's massive, so don't want to waste my time doing that. The ice cream's £6, so I don't want to go and spend loads of money on a tiny tub of ice cream. So what do I do in the interval? You know, do I sit here and wait, or do I get up and walk around? Um... You know, it is that, it's that energy of you're not quite sure what to do before the curtain opens again. That was a nice little uh, vision that I had. Okay, this one wants to come out. The Emperor. Power. Someone is feeling more powerful, but someone has been through an intense time here. Um, so the Emperor in this deck, he looks like he needs a good meal to me. He looks like he needs fattening up a little bit. So I really do feel like the either you or your person um, has been through quite a challenging time. It's taken a lot from them as well. It's really, it's really aged them. You know, it's been been challenging it's been difficult it's been hard it's been um an uphill struggle for many but i am seeing that 
they're slowly stepping into their power, rebuilding their life. You know, if you look at this tower in the background, I always see this in this deck as they've had a tower moment and they're rebuilding from that collapse. So something has shifted for you or them, something has shifted and um, you're rebuilding after this shift has happened. There's been some kind of destruction, um, but this destruction was necessary for power, necessary, yeah, for growth. Um, this person could not be in their emperor energy if they hadn't had this tower moment but it does take time to rebuild and you know this is just masculine energy so this isn't necessarily the masculine in your connection this could be you this could be you stepping into your own masculine energy because you've rebuilt after a tower moment in fact that's resonating a little bit more as i'm saying that that is resonating more so i do feel like you're feeling more powerful and more stable because you um, rebuilt from this tower moment. But <laughs> you're not prepared to, to let me know what's going on in your heart space. So I've just seen this card and you know someone's just done a big, a big X, like literally on my heart center. So it's like you've rebuilt from this tower moment, but you are not quite ready to open your heart yet wonder why i'm gonna ask why why do we have a closed heart space here and remember this could be you this could be a person you're inquiring about take um take it as it resonates switch for roles if necessary king of swords okay so you need to check out my video i've just put on youtube because king of swords was the first card that came out in that so they're obviously linked so why is um why is yours or their heart not open? I'm actually sensing here that this is most likely to be them. Justice also was um, poking out there. So, it's not that their heart is closed. It's that they are not letting their emotions rule this situation. It's that this person has taken a step back so that they can plan, so that they can think logically, they can strategize without letting their emotions push them to take impulsive action. You know, this was the overall energy I got of your counterpart in the YouTube video. And it's coming out again to say like, you know, it's not that their heart is closed, it's that they're not letting it be the driving force now you know they really are using their brain they really are thinking about this connection and actually what they want to to do you know this person's probably been very in and out this person has probably rushed back before they were ready because of the love because of the connection the pull towards you um you know they, the chemistry and it's like they know they've kept coming back before they were ready and it's not being fair. That's why justice is showing up. It's to say, look, the way this person was in the past was not fair towards you. It wasn't the justice you deserved. Um, so they've, they've realised that. It might have taken a long time to realise that, but they have realised it. Um, and they've realised that they want to, to make things right. But for that to happen, they have to think. They have to use their brain. We have to have some kind of engagement here um, of, you know, their mental capabilities so that they can actually make a plan which isn't going to hurt anyone. Because this person knows they've hurt you. They know that they have caused pain in the past, that they've... I'm just hearing that they fucked up. Like, they're sorry for a fuck up. They're sorry that they didn't they didn't do things right by you but they also want you to know they didn't do things right by you because they followed their heart and every time they followed their heart yeah you're in the center of their heart space so they were always brought back to you they were always pulled back towards you every time they listened to their heart and they're realizing now that it's not that their heart was wrong it's not that their heart was misguiding them it's that the love they have for you is so intense and overwhelming that whenever they follow their heart, they rush back. They come straight back to you because that's how this connection works. So they have decided to take some space to think things through so that they can provide justice. 
because it's time. We are in Libra season. You know, justice is the card of Libra. Um, we are in Libra season, and it's it is the season for justice. So between um now because i'm also i'm sensing that this isn't past energies this is like current and future so we've got until the 22nd of october to have this justice um this person wants to to restore this balance and also is integrating their masculine and feminine energies so if you look at the triangles here that's the masculine one that's the feminine one that is the symbol of divine masculine and divine feminines so this is um this person wanting to to or actually coming into balance wanting to balance themselves and also wanting to balance things out in this connection and uh look at her eyes that is a penetrating stare so the message here is one to make sure that you're not uh judging too harshly but you know you're understanding why this person is behaving this way it's not that they don't care and um, it's not that they don't love you it's because they don't want to keep hurting you you know you might be like where is this person you know i thought they loved me and they're not showing it in a couple of months or weeks well they've not shown you that love because they've had to go through this they've had to change their approach you know was their previous approach working no so don't complain that they've changed it you know, don't complain that they aren't doing things the way they've done before because that wasn't working anyway. Um, so yeah, make sure you're not judging too harshly. But also, I'm I'm sensing that you and this person seeing things clearly now. You know, it's that whole I can see clearly now. The rain has gone. Um, I'm not going to sing for you. I'm not going to talk to you like that. But yeah, it is this person, and you can start to see things clearly now. Um, there's a lot of light coming in as well. Um, and this eagle here that's in this uh, this card here um, for the other person, look where it is now. It's peeping over her shoulder in the justice card. So I really do feel like you're integrating with them, but also there's some kind of ascension, there's clarity coming in. This eagle is communication. Um, for some of you, without sounding arrogant, like I'm that divine messenger, I'm that person now who's getting this message across for you. Um, for others, like it's going to be coming in the 5D. There's going to be some way of them telling you why they're behaving like this. And whether that's through this reading that I'm doing now or another source, there's going to be some way that you're going to really understand what's going on. Um, they're making sure that that telepathic communication is coming through so that you yeah you understand why they're behaving like this because it, it is off it feels off it's like you can feel the 5d connection feel all this love and the 3d just doesn't match it um so i am seeing that you're going to be you're going to be getting clarity on that and understanding why all this is necessary the full Okay, first message coming out is this person knows they've been a fool in the past. They know um, they've leapt before it was time. They've, they've, they've tried to manifest this new beginning. So they've tried to, um, to have a new, like fresh start with you before they were ready. Um, they kept jumping in. You know, they kept jumping in before it was time. I'm really I'm hearing the Hokey Cokey song in my head. You know, um, in, out, shake it all about. Like, they, they've been in and out because they wanted to keep jumping in and they weren't ready. Um, so now they're sending a little bit of a, 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 little bit of a distraction. Um, so this person, because they were jumping in and out before they were ready, they are sending a distraction and that's why the 3D is off. Um, that's why things aren't matching right now. So you might feel like, oh wow, like this isn't coming together, this isn't working, you know, whatever, however that resonates for you, you know, you might just feel very distracted, very cut off from the connection, and that is a divine distraction sent to you by their higher self. Um, why are you being distracted? Because 
space is needed and because there's a surprise coming i'm going to ask now you know why do we have this distraction too many why do we have this distraction five of swords <laughs> okay oh what on earth is that man doing lying down on that pentagram with um surrounded by five swords okay the five of swords in traditional tarot um you will have seen the card i don't know if i've got it here five of swords in traditional tarot is someone walking away from a battlefield it's normally a message of making sure that you're not hurting anyone through your action that you're not kind of like um doing anything for victory and not thinking about other people it can be a sign that you're walking away from situations that aren't serving you anymore i really can't find it in that deck in this deck i'm not getting that feeling at all you're being distracted because your person is going through their awakening but doing it in their own way oh I really just get that this person's trying so hard to to be right for you and <laughs> this person knows how spiritual you are. So this person knows that you are deeply spiritual and they know that they want to kind of match that vibration. So they're trying in their own little way to to do their spiritual thing, to ascend, to 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 wake up. You know, they they really are trying. And we'll have a look at the Five of Swords and what it actually says in the book because I'm finding that picture quite funny. Um, five of Swords, a man lies in the desert, detained by five upright swords which pierce roses. Okay, <laughs> meaning acceptance of the unavoidable, clear perspective and new knowledge. So you're being distracted because this person is actually accepting this connection. It is unavoidable. They can't get away from this connection. And um, they're trying. They are trying hard. You know, they have accepted the connection. They've accepted that they can't escape you as much as they've tried. You know, as, as hard as they've tried to run away from this, they can't. They can't get out of it. Um, so they're sending a little bit of a distraction so that they can have their time to work through this energy. Have their time to to try and connect um, with their spiritual side. And they're going through changes as well. They are going through changes in their, um, their own connection to their higher self, to the universe. You know, they are transitioning and transforming. And as a result of that, um, as a result of that transformation, you know, they need a little, a little bit of space to do that. Okay, the High Priestess has come out. So, we have a lot of yin-yang symbolism today. So, there is an integration happening. I'm also sensing that there's some mysteries which are going to be revealed. I'm going to ask when. Uh, okay, being told in the next two days. So I wasn't expecting that. I was thinking a couple of weeks or I was going to try and get a date. But straight away, I'm just being told the next two days. So the next two days, and I also have something happening on the 21st of October. So make note of that. Um, 21st of October is coming to mind. So the next two days, we have something being revealed because it needs to be revealed before the full moon. Um something needs to shift before we have this full moon where does two days take us friday um something happening on friday and i sense that there is a little bit of mystery right now but you might be seeing something shift in a couple of days um something is beginning something is ending so i'm just going to ask now what is happening um in two days time like what am i feeling for this friday Seven of Cups. So we have here someone making a decision. And they're making a decision because of this memory. Someone is thinking a lot about the past. A lot about... A lot about where they've messed up. Where things have, have gone wrong. 
um, and let's see what we're going to do about it because right now I'm getting that these next two days we have a lot of regret coming from this person yeah a lot of confusion and a little bit of ego so is this ego coming or staying let's uh, coming or going sorry we don't want it to stay we have ego leaving um, I'm really getting that you know that we have an ego death happening in the next two days so this full moon on on sunday um on the 13th i really do sense that something's shifting in the next two or three days um which is meaning that we have an ego death happening before the full moon we have um your person is going to be I don't say like dying but they are they, they are going to go through a huge death a huge transformation um and this has been planned for a long time, this actual date. So, you know, this full moon has been planned for a, a long time because, you know, we have some interesting planetary transitions this year. Um, the whole Saturn and Pluto retrograde thing. And then we also have a transition happening between them, um, which only happens like once every couple of years. And there's something happening this year. Um, I'll post it on my story because I found it really interesting. I'm not an astrologer, so do not ask me for lots of detail. But there was something, some kind of transition happening between Jupiter, Saturn and Pluto, um, which hasn't happened in 2000 years. 2000 years that's crazy that is a long long time um so there is something very interesting happening this year astrologically and i do sense that that's why this has been planned this full moon for some reason has been written in the akashic records has been written in in your records in your kind of contract that's the word i'm looking for um it's for contract with this person. This full moon has been uh, important. It's. I'm going to get some cards of that. You know, what is it about this full moon doing for this, uh, this soul contract? These, I keep getting clumps of cards jumping out. I'm just going to take them. We have the three of wands. We have the ten of wands. And we have the Prince of Pentacles. So what is this full moon doing for, for this contract or connection? And as I said before, this transit, look what is on top of this Ten of Wands. That is Saturn, my friends. That is Saturn. So yeah, it is this transit, which is huge. Um, it's ending a painful cycle. It's rebuilding something. And um, this full moon is freeing you and this person there is freedom happening here and we have growth we have renewal i'm seeing some kind of celebration so there's going to be some kind of celebration happening between no some kind of celebration happening for you it's not between you and this person you're going to be celebrating your own success and abundance without them and that's going to help um bring you both together but I'm seeing that you're going to be having fun and celebrating on your own it is going to be completely independent and this prince of pentacles the full moon I have your person wanting to surrender I'm seeing a peace offering coming in I'm seeing someone waving a flag I'm seeing someone being like look I give in I really really give in I'm um I'm done I'm fine like ready you know this person is a little bit stubborn so they're not really happy about about it's not that they're not happy about this connection it's that they you know they have resisted it for so long they've been through this this big battle with their ego which is why they're having this ego death in a couple of days time and as a result of that ego death it's like okay fine look my soul has won but you know that little bit of ego that's left in them because we always have our ego present you know that little bit of resistance still you know they're not happy that they've been through all of this but it's been this tumultuous journey so i do not know anyone who is a twin flame who is actually always happy about this connection and that's how your person's going to be feeling they're going to be like 
not pissed off, but you know, they are going to be like, for fuck's sake, why did I agree to this in this lifetime? You know, why did I decide I was going to incarnate with my twin flame and come into union in this lifetime? <laughs> it's that kind of like realization of, I fucking chose this. Why on earth did I choose this? <coughs> um, and then once we've realized it, they're going to have to talk about it. They're going to have to speak up about it. Three of Cups. Okay, this is funny. So, as I said here, this Three of Wands here, I'm seeing you celebrating, you know, with, after this full moon, or this full moon is going to help you um, have fun and celebrate it, celebrating yourself, your success, your abundance, um, your happiness, you know, celebrating you. As you celebrate you, what do we have? You're then going to be able to celebrate this partnership and this relationship. So what I'm getting here is that you can't just celebrate the relationship without celebrating yourself first. You have to put yourself first because like in any relationship or connection or, you know, even the relationship with your mum or your dad or your sibling, you know, your friend... If you don't put yourself first, how can you have a healthy relationship with them? You know, if every time your mum asks you to do something with her and you haven't really had that time for yourself, um, you're going to resent it. You know, you're not going to be able to enjoy the time with them. You have to have time for yourself. You have to put yourself first. And as you celebrate yourself, that's when you'll be able to celebrate this relationship. So, you know, you're being asked to really think about, are you celebrating yourself? Are you, are you happy? Are you happy in yourself? Because I tell you now, until you're happy in yourself, you're not going to be happy in a relationship. And that's a really hard truth for some people to hear. You know, some people don't like it when I say that. But, you know, it is true. And it's something that I've had to learn. It's kind of like... It's just the way the universe works. It's one of those things, you know. If you can't enjoy yourself, if you can't enjoy your own company, if you can't be happy on your own, how can you expect someone else to make you happy? Because then your happiness comes from them. And your happiness can't. Another person cannot be the only reason that you're happy. You know, it, ha it has to come from you first. Okay, I'm going to get one more card from this deck. We're going to switch decks and um, do another spread. So what is the final message, please, from this deck? Flew out. Two of Pentacles. So I don't know if you can see it here, but on that sail we have um, a yin-yang symbol. On the High Priestess we have yin-yang um, on justice, we have a big yin yang symbol here. And I said earlier that I'm really seeing the yin yang symbol a lot in this reading, and it's just come out again. What else we have in this card? We have a ship coming in. So, what I'm getting the final message from this deck is that yes, your ship is coming in, but you need to balance yourself out, you need to, uh, to take your own steps forwards. And for some of you, you need to stop waiting, you need to stop waiting at the dock for your ship to come in because. As, this ship is moving slowly let me put it that way you know this ship it has a sail it's relying on the wind to move it forwards it's not a, it's not a, a motorboat you know it's not it's not electric it's it's governed by spirit it's governed by the universe so it has to have the right wind to move forwards and it's like as long as you're stood there waiting the universe is like okay wind off you know, because it can do that, because it's the universe, so, um, it is like, look, she's not learned her lesson, or he's not learned his lesson, they're waiting by the dock again, I'm going to stop this boat, or this ship, and we're going to wait until they move, and, you know, start taking action, because you can't be waiting around for, for shit to happen, you know, you've got to get on with your life, so, for this ship to come in, you do have to walk away, I'm not saying you have to give up, some people are like, what is walking away? I can't walk away from this connection. Of course you can't, you know. The whole thing about the twin flame journey or other soul connections is your souls are connected. You can't really walk away from them, but you sure as hell can walk forwards and move on with your life. 
you know, I always say the beauty about these soul connections is the freedom. It's the freedom you have with this person, that you can have this connection and really, you know, go apart and grow separately and heal. And, you know, you can do this independently of the other person and you never lose that connection. You know, it's, um, it's that kind of energy, you know, it is, yeah, walk away so they can chase you. As long as you're waiting around, they're not going to come. You know, it, it is, it is just the way this, this is working right now. So you do need to think about what can you do to move forward? What can you do to distract yourself? You know, what, what fulfills you? Yeah. Okay, we're going to pull, in fact, I'm going to let you choose. So, I'm going to do another spread, and you can have either Witch's Tarot or Tarot of Sexual Magic. You can pick, post in the comments now, whichever one's the first one I see, um, I, will, I will use. So, Witch's or Sex Deck? <laughs> Witch's. Okay, we've got a winner. Sorry, which has got in there first. Um, if you're lucky, I, I might pull a couple of cards from the sex deck after. But let's get some messages from a witch's tarot. Okay. <laughs> we have shadow side and the seven of wands. So what I'm getting here is that, you know, you need to work hard to heal your shadows. There's shadows in this connection that still need to be healed and faced. So the next, the next week... It is, um, it's not long-term energy I'm getting here. I'm getting this is very short-term. You know, this is the next, the next week or so, week and a half. Mm, when's the 15th? Six days time. I feel like the next week. So the next week is going to help, you know, heal any shadows, like face any shadows. Um, because they do need to be resolved i'm also getting there is some unresolved energies between you and this person there's some there's a a big massive pink elephant in the room there is a conversation that needs to happen i'm getting here there's a conversation that needs to happen temperance wow there is a conversation that needs to happen about union I didn't expect that message to come out because I was thinking in my head, what is this conversation about? And we have it, wow, I just went to like pick up that deck and um, yeah, this slid out. I was going to show you the Ten of Cups on the bottom of the deck and the way I picked that up meant that the lovers slipped out. We've got that fool, I'm a fool in love. Um, give me a second to to channel this. So... You're facing your shadows in this next week, in the next like six to seven days, around this full moon, you know. I always feel like the full moon, it doesn't always resolve things. We always have the energy after the full moon as well, which, um, you know, helps with this healing and this release. So, around this full moon, I sense that you're both feeling the need to have a conversation about this union. Because... It's here, it's on the bottom. It's like you two have both reached a level where you know this relationship is destined. You know this relationship is going to happen. So it's like, why are you both resisting it? You know, why are you both scared? Because you're both scared. I'm not going to sit here and listen to anyone who says they're not scared of their union because I don't believe that. Um, the way mirroring works, the way all of this works, if they're scared, you're scared. And it could be that you're scared of being hurt again. You're scared that it's not union, that, you know, it's going to be more separation. There's fears here that need to be discussed. You know, that's why it's time to talk, because it's like there is unresolved fear here. But only both of you having a conversation about is going to resolve this. It doesn't matter how much work you do on your own. At some point, you're going to need to discuss your fears so that your person can be like, no, that's stupid. I'm not leaving you again. I've been through this as well and I know I want to be with you. Or if you're thinking, you know, what if they don't love me? You know, you're going to have this conversation and they're going to be like, I do love you. Like, you know, you're going to be talking about these fears. And then I really do feel like, I just keep getting my message, I'm a fool in love. 
So maybe I've been a fool in the past, I don't want to be a fool in the future. I understand this connection, I know I know that you're the one for me. Um, so let's discuss things, let's have a conversation. I'm not sure if there's anything else coming out of this deck, but there is. Nine of Swords. Yep, yeah, anxieties, fears, illusions, worries, concerns, nightmares, thinking the worst, okay? Um, and there's no need for it. Some of you being really dramatic. And I'm just, just going to say it how I'm channeling it. Some of you are being really dramatic and there is no need. You're worrying yourself unnecessarily. Because, yeah, you might be feeling some of these shadows. You might be feeling some of your fears. But there is no, not that there's no need, there is a need for you to be feeling this. But you don't need to keep yourself stuck. You know, you know, you know. How many times do you have to be shown the signs and synchronicities? How many times do you have to see your person's name um, in weird ways? Or see the number signs, 1111 or 111? You know, whatever it is that's your sign... I don't know, if it's a badger wearing a hat, whatever it is, the sign that you've asked for, how many times does the universe have to show you before you're going to stop worrying yourself unnecessarily? Yeah, okay, you're scared, or you have fears, or you have concerns, that's completely fine, and every time you feel these fears, it's helping heal something deeper within you. Um, so I'm not saying ignore them, but I am saying stop being dramatic. <laughs> Stop making this bigger than it needs to be. You know, it doesn't have to be this huge issue. It doesn't have to be uh, as hard as you're making it for some of you. Spirit is not being kind today with us. Um, it's funny as well because sometimes when I say these messages, it sounds like really preachy. But these messages are just as much for me. I've been so stuck in fears and worries about this connection lately. So these messages are completely for me as well. You know, don't feel like I'm just, you know, being a dick with you all. Two of Wands. What did I say before about waiting at the dock for this ship to come in? And that's the Three of Wands, not the Two of Wands. You've got to move away. You've got to move forwards. You really do have to move forward. You can't be waiting around for this to come in. You've got to find your own wish fulfillment outside of your connection with this person. Okay. As promised, we're going to use this one now. So let us channel some nicer messages, hopefully. First card out, two of wands. This conversation, this is an important conversation that you're going to be having. What's funny as well is, um, this last card, I went two of wands and it wasn't, it was the three of wands. Well, Spirit was saying, yeah, two of wands is coming. That conversation is coming and it's coming as soon as you stop looking for it. This is going to be a surprise and that's why you might be feeling a little bit detached because as you... As you stop waiting for this ship to come in, it's going to happen. It's going to appear. This is a date for some of you. You will be going on a date with your person. You'll be asked for dinner. For others, this is going to be a conversation, whether that be through text message or face-to-face -face or phone call. However, this is for you. It's going to be different for different situations. But one thing I am getting here is that if you want this conversation to happen, you have to put your weapon down. You have to put your weapon down and they're going to put their weapon down. It's kind of like, um, you know, in Hunger Games, like Katniss has a few encounters where she kind of like has the opportunity to kill and then they both run away. It's like, you know, if you're both looking at each other with your weapons out, it's like, is it safe? Are they going to attack? Like, can I move closer? Or are they going to shoot me? You know, it's like you've got to put your weapon down. And as soon as you put your weapon down, they'll be like, okay, it's safe. I'll put my weapon down too. You know, but it is... It's like one of you is going to have to do this first. And you're the one who's being told this message. So it's going to be you. You know, you're being guided here, really. Put your weapon down and they will put theirs down. And then we can have this... Uh, this communication this conversation then we can break bread together we can um have a chat 
we can talk about things. I'm also told, um, not from that card, we can talk about things and then we can have the intimacy. Then we can have um, everything else. But there is going to be a conversation before sex. There is going to be a conversation before you two move forwards. Um, you know, there is going to be that... It's just needed, that chat. It's needed. We also have a fool again. Uh, I feel like the fool has come out in all three decks I've used. So the fool has come out in all three decks. So we've got three zeros here, three fools. Um, new beginnings. There is new beginnings here. I'm going to get a clarifier for this fool. Because I feel like someone is walking straight past temptation. Um, and that temptation is to slip back into old cycles. So this person is walking straight past the temptation to approach you the same way they have in the past, which could be sexual. Maybe they always communicate sexually with you. Or maybe... Um, I had it and it's gone. I have it back. So maybe they always... It's always like sexual energy that comes from them. Or, yeah, maybe they've been in and out, you know, and not been able to offer you anything. So it's like, they're walking straight past that temptation to go back to that approach. For rubbers, the message here is that they're not interested in anyone else. They aren't interested in um, other people. So if you've been worried about that, I'm just getting you. There's no need to worry about that. And why do you not need to worry about them being intimate with other people? Because... They're a fool in love, and they're in love with you. They are your fool. If you've been wondering if your person is sleeping with someone else, or being intimate with someone else, and obviously this doesn't relate to those in karmic partnerships, because that's different, but if you've been worried about if your person's up to something behind your back, I'm just getting the message coming through here that, yeah, I'm a fool, but I'm not that much of an idiot. So they might be a little bit overwhelmed by this connection but they're not doing anything to je jeopardize jeopardize i can't say that word they're not doing anything to fuck it up they're not doing anything which is going to risk losing you yeah they might be stupid they might uh, be a bit of an idiot at times but they're not that stupid they're not going to do anything to lose you hearing the song wherever i lay my hat that's my home so this person um, feels lost without you. This person really does feel, really does feel lost without you. Kind of homeless. I am, I am getting that message coming to you. But this person feels a, a little bit homeless without you, um, because you are their home. Like the way your soul connection is means that you two are each other's home. And as much as you shouldn't make a home in another person, it's like when the two of you come together, that's what home is. You know, when the, you're when you're both happy independently, but then you come together and that is that is home. Um so this person does feel a little bit lost about you, a little bit like a nomad, like they're wandering around without any anywhere to call home. So they do want to return to you and lay their hat and make you their home. King of Chalices, this person has a lot of emotion that they've not been showing you. Also, King of Chalices in this deck, I'm going to read the message from the book because it's important. Um, the magic of the spiced tea. That's funny because before I did this reading I made myself a pot of spiced tea which I've now drunk. So we have the magic of the spiced tea, um, confirmed with the synchronicity of my spiced tea. Um, a transparent and harmonious relationship must be fueled by surprises, awe and constant bantering. So this person wants to surprise you. I am, I've been getting this whole reading of a surprise coming in. Um, and that's what's going to fuel this relationship. That's what's going to, it's, that's what's going to make it move forward. This is a surprise. But it can only be a surprise when you stop waiting at this dock here. So make sure you are moving forward in your own life and you're not just 
waiting around for this person to return um because you know they're going to return you've seen that ship coming in and yeah you're like okay it's moving pretty slowly so i'm not going to wait here i'm going to focus on what what makes me happy i'm going to learn something new or i'm going to um focus on my career you know focus on creating an environment around me which is fulfilling so this person is going to be surprising you Is communication coming around the full moon? It's a mystery. But right now, this person is frustrated at the communication that you two have. Really scared they're going to lose you. Really getting that feeling that they're worried they're going to lose you if they can't tell you how they feel soon enough. Um, you know, if they feel like they can't... They feel like... They feel like... I've, I can't even get the words out. Ugh, that's annoying. They know how they feel, they want to say it, but they can't get it out. They can't spit these words out. Um, and it's frustrating them, so maybe the full moon's going to help with that. I am going to a little bit... Going, oh, I really can't speak. I'm feeling their energy. I'm going to have to talk slowly. They're, li they're literally taking the words from me. It's like... This person is really, really struggling to communicate. Knave of Swords here. So there is going to be communication coming in because the knaves are um, pages and pages are communication. This person is going to communicate when you stop waiting around because they're going to take on a role of the chaser. So there is going to be a bit of a role reversal here as you really step back and let them step into this energy they are going to to be telling you how they feel and they are going to be chasing put the weapon down i am getting that message again that you need to put the weapon down because if a weapon is up i'm sensing that it's not going to cause delays but you know if you're holding a gun at someone's head are they really going to to want to speak and if they do speak it's going to be saying everything that they feel that they need to say to stop you shooting them it's not going to be that honest and authentic communication put the weapon down and they'll say what they want to say not what they feel they need to say seven of swords you two are in this energy of feeling at odds but it's kind of like Look how close they are. They're touching, but they're just not on the same page right now. They're just facing different ways. Both feeling quite sad. Um, you had the blessing of being able to see longer term for this connection. I feel like your counterpart knows what they want to happen, but they do struggle with... Um, at <laughs> Basically, what I'm trying to get here is that you have seen psychically what's going to happen. You have seen the future that you're going to have with this person. And this person has seen it too, but is still a little bit worried that that's maybe just uh, just what they want. is their desires and not actually going to manifest. You know, they're worried that the future that they want with you um, is out of reach. But again, I'm getting here this communication that's going to happen. <coughs> and it's going to happen. Um, they're going to be telling you what they feel. They're going to be wanting to speak. In both these cards, you know, his hand is over her mouth, stopping her from speaking. And he is definitely the one speaking here. Um, you can see from his kind of like hands, the way his hands are, that he's the one who is wanting to speak. So, um he is going to be expressing himself and also you know look how similar the imagery is here between these people so they are uh, this conversation is going to happen but it's going to be them telling you how they feel which is why it might be a bit of a surprise maybe it's been like trying to get blood out of a stone when you've tried to get their emotions out and um that's going to change they're going to be opening up to you without you really applying any pressure because you've put your weapon down so there's no pressure. Chariot, someone is coming home. Someone is taking action. Someone is arriving. Someone is arriving. Um, again, I'm getting a pull to, to look at the book for the chariot in this um, 
deck. But I just sense here that someone is arriving. They are coming home. Um, you must change tactics and perspective. Faking a retreat and then staging a forceful surprise attack. No wonder I was guided to read the book. That just confirms everything I've said in this reading. So, yeah, the chariot here is to show up that this person has faked a retreat. They have retreated and withdrawn. And that's so they can change their tactics, change their approach, which I got right at the start of this reading. But they are changing their approach because their previous approaches have not worked. They've only caused hurt and upset. So this person has changed their approach, faked a retreat, and then staging a forceful surprise attack. I like the word forceful. What I'm getting here is that, yeah, this is going to be a surprise. It is going to be a surprise communication coming in. But they are really... Uh, they're really knowing what they want. And this forceful, that's like, no, look, I am going to tell you how I feel because it's important that you know. It's that certainty that they've not had. You know, whereas they might have been a bit flaky in the past, this forceful surprise attack is like... You're going to be mine because I know you love me and even though I've hurt you in the past, I'm not letting you go and we're going to be together. <laughs> it's like, you know, the notebook, the way he just is so forceful with her sometimes with what he says. He's like, no, I know, you know, yeah, okay, it's not perfect, but we're going to be together. We're going to work this out. It's about knowing. And I smiled before because on the bottom of the deck we've got the Ace of Wands. In this deck, the Ace of Wands, I'm going to read it from here for you. Um, Ace of Wands, Union. First word, this card means Union. The magic of the statues in the fire. Abandon is the surrender of oneself. One loses his own likeness to enter into something much greater. This person surrendering to love, surrendering to this connection. This forceful surprise attack. It's union. It is going to be union. And that's why I said earlier, you know, when I used the Witch's Tarot, the message I got from that is, you and this person are going to have a conversation about union. About what it is, about the fears you have, and how you can move into it. Okay. Um, I'm going to end the reading there because I don't... I just feel like we've had so much come out there and I, I don't want to push for any more. I feel like the message is really come out themselves so I don't want to um, deprive for any more information so I do have a new members area on my website where I'm going to post exclusive videos so do check um, my profile there's a link there for this members area it's a monthly subscription you get all the extended readings you get loads of extra content as well so I've done some how to read tarot videos so to teach you you know how to read your own tarot cards um, based off your intuition as well so it's got the basic definitions of all the cards and then the next couple of videos are going to show you really how to read tarot um, based off you know just using your intuition the combination of the cards and looking at the pictures so there's going to be loads of extra stuff on there um, and what else yeah I've put a video up on YouTube I'd recommend you watch that because it really does kind of like mirror the messages coming out in this reading um, and now if you've got any questions you've got a couple of minutes to post them in the comments no requests for personal readings please or pulling a card for this or that because you know you know you can pay to get a reading from me um if i've not got any in stock i will put some more up when i've caught up with my readings um so yeah if you've got any other very general questions or anything to ask you know do post me in the comments now and i will um spend a couple of minutes just answering your questions Um, I will share it with my stories as well for those of you who are at work um, or didn't catch the full live because it was really good from start to finish. Um, so, yeah, if um, if you didn't see the whole thing, I will I'll post it there. Messages from Divine Masculine to the Divine Feminine. I'm only going to get one message because I feel like the messages have already come out. Make sure you rest. There you go. I'm not giving anything away because I've told you it's going to be a surprise. So all you need to do is rest up. Um, ch -ch -ch. 
Yeah, um, masculine and feminine, he and she is just describing energy. So if you're in a same sex um, twin flame relationship or other soul connection, just, you know, um, yeah, take whichever side kind of like resonates for you. But obviously, like, if you're, if you're a same sex couple, the reading really does still apply because I only describe energy here, don't describe actual genders. Um, if you've ordered a message deck, they have been posted today, um, or I posted quite a few, it depends when you ordered, there was a big batch that went last week, some that went today, um, international delivery sometimes takes a little bit of time, so just be, um, just be patient and it has been posted. I say move forwards it's about moving forwards to find your own happiness you know you do need to be happy on your own before you can be happy in a relationship and um your happiness attracts them to you if you're miserable without them then why on earth would they want to be with you that's not really not an attractive energy to have when you're happy you know they are attracted to you because they don't feel that pressure to make you happy because you're happy on your own um I believe that only you can find out who your twin flame is. There's no reader who can really kind of confirm or deny that. Um, and even if they did, like, you've got to feel it yourself to actually believe it. It doesn't matter how many people say they're your twin flame. It's, uh, you know, you've, you've got to find that out yourself. And it does take time, so don't worry if you kind of dip in and out of believing. Um, just really trust your intuition when it comes to this person. Um, it doesn't matter if they're aware of telepathic communication or not, it happens, it's how you get messages across. Um, they, they probably don't know that you're sending them these messages, but they're receiving them and that's all that matters. Any other questions? The readings question, so should you only get readings from people who are also twin flames? No, but yes. It depends. So if you want a reading on your connection, um, I would kind of recommend going to a twin flame reader, just because someone else might just pick up on the energy of all the shit that's happened between you both and be like, oh, this person's hurt you, you know, this person wasn't good for you. Because on a 3D level, yeah, they probably weren't good for you at some point because you'd both been triggering each other. So if they just pick up on all the triggers because they don't understand the twin flame connection or they're not a twin flame, um, then you're you know, you're not going to get much out of that reading. But then most of the, well, pretty much every reading I have personally isn't from a twin flame reader um, because I'm never really interested in that stuff. I kind of focus more on, I want guidance on my career and stuff like that. Um, or sometimes I quite like to get, for them to get messages from my grandma to come through. So I work with kind of like mediums. Um, so yeah, it depends what you're looking for. You know, I do get most of my readings from non-twin flame readers, but that's because I'm going for non-twin flame messages. Um, if I'm looking for information about my connection, I would go to another twin flame reader. Um, okay, I'm going to end the reading there because I've got a notification that we've got a minute left. So I'm going to leave it there and hopefully I will be back soon with another live. <laughs>